Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have The Screaming Skull. Betisco Manor is often referred to as the house of the Screaming Skull, thanks to a legend that dates back to the 19th century. Legend goes that the owner of the manor at the time of this legend had a slave who fell seriously ill. As he lay dying, he had one last request, which was to have his body returned to his home. It's a pretty fair request, and truly the least this family could have done for the man. In fact, he even said that he would never rest until his body was returned home. Of course, the owner of the manor was a huge piece of work who refused, citing that this would make the burial far too expensive, and instead he ended up having the body buried on the grounds of the manor. It is said that after this, the village in which the manor resides was plagued with ghostly screams and cries coming from the cemetery. Apparently, at the manor, they began experiencing things like the windows rattling and the doors slamming, seemingly of their own accord. Listen. I wish that this man could have just rested at home like he was supposed to be, but considering how awful these people were, I am so happy that he made sure everyone and their families were haunted because of their greedy behavior. In the end, it is said that the hauntings got so bad they ended up exhuming the body and bringing it into the manor. From here, it is said that the body somehow disappeared, all except for the skull, which still resides in the manor. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Iceman. Okay, so this is not an object because it's a mummy but I still had to include him on this list because the story is so crazy. The mummy of Oatsy, who is also referred to as the Iceman, was found in 1991 in the Oatsal Alps in Italy. It is believed that Oatsy lived around 3000 BC and his body became mummified and preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him post-mortem. While this is an incredibly interesting discovery, the finding of Oatsy may have come in a package with an old curse just waiting to be released. Here's the thing, the people who helped with the discovery of Oatsy are all dying under mysterious circumstances. I mean, we are currently at person number seven within one year, so that's very suspicious. When molecular archaeologist Tom Loy was writing a book about Oatsy, he passed away from a blood related condition that he was diagnosed with shortly after becoming involved with the Iceman. The German tourist, Helmut Simon, who discovered the mummy, felt his death while hiking in the same spot he saw Oatsy. Dieter Warnick, who was the head of the mountain rescue team that was assigned to finding the mummy died of a heart attack at just age 45, just an hour after Simon's funeral. To avoid this becoming an hour long list, I'll stop here, but that is just half of those who seemingly fell victim to the curse of the Iceman. I don't know, maybe disturbing a man who's been in the same spot for 53 centuries wasn't the best idea anyone has ever had. In our number 8 spot today we have the Atlantis Ring. The Atlantis Ring was originally made of clay and it was found in 1860 in the Valley of the kings in a tomb of an Egyptian high priest. It was then passed on to Howard Carter who kept it until he passed away in 1939. The ring was believed to be at least 5,000 years old and it had geometric symbols carved into it that were unlike anything known in Egypt. Here's where the story gets a little weirder though. Howard is one of the people who discovered King Tut's tomb and he would later tell people that he was wearing a talisman when the tomb was opened aka the Atlantis Ring. He claimed that the ring gave him protection and that just might be true because he is the only member of the team who didn't die a mysterious death after the opening of the tomb. Even those who visited shortly after the opening of the tomb were subjected to this curse, with a total of 18 victims in the end. Howard said that this ring is what protected him against whatever evil forces were at play. So I guess maybe the Atlantis Ring is more like an anti-cursed object? I don't know, but what I do know is that it is all quite curious. There are now replicas that are sold, but I'm sure none hold the power of the real deal. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Bizano Vase. The Bizano Vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in Napoli. On the wedding night, however, the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last breaths, she vowed to have her revenge, and at this point, Point, it became unclear whether the vase was already cursed, or perhaps if this may be what caused the curse in the first place. As time went on, the vase was handed from person to person within her family, and with each new owner came a mysterious death. Because of this, the family decided to hide the vase away in some sort of secret location, and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned, beware, 
this vase brings death. Well, of course, whoever found this vase did not listen, and instead they sold the vase once again. The first buyer, who is said to have been a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then there was the 37 year old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it three months with this vase in his possession, and at this point, you get where this is going. At this point, we don't know exactly where this vase ended up, but I'm hoping it's somewhere deep underground, or in space, or somewhere else far, far away from us all. In our number 6 spot today we have the Belcourt Castle Chairs. Belcourt Castle is located in Newport, Rhode Island, and it is a former summer cottage. Construction on the cottage started in 1891, with it being completed in 1894, and inside there is a ballroom. This ballroom is important because it is said that it holds a group of haunted chairs. People who have visited the castle have reported a ton of strange happenings regarding this specific set of chairs. The reports include things like feeling chills racing up and down their spines, or feeling a strange sensation and a shift of energy while standing near the chairs, and some people have even explained how they have been pushed out of the chairs by an invisible force. I feel like just hearing these stories might be enough to explain the energy shift some people are feeling, but actually being pushed out of a chair by some sort of invisible force would be absolutely terrifying. In our number 5 spot today we have the Koh-i-Noor Diamond. This diamond has an extremely controversial history and it is the source of a lot of debate, but regardless of the ongoing conversations over who really owns it, we are here to talk about the curse that this stone is said to hold. The diamond dates back thousands of years and its curse is said to only affect men. It is said that the jewel can bring about great wealth, but it can also bring great misfortune as well to those who own it. Folklore states that quote, he who owns this diamond will own the world, but will also know all its misfortunes. Only God or women can wear it with impunity. Throughout the history of the diamond, it was passed among many people and rulers who all fought bloody battles while in possession of it. Every prince who had it is said to have ultimately either lost their power or their life while in possession of it as well. Part of the controversy of the diamond is how it ended up in the hands of the British royal family during colonization in the 1800s. Ever since then, it has only been worn by female monarchs, including Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth. In our number 4 spot today we have the Destiny Ring. Rudolph Valentino was an incredibly famous silent film star before he passed away at the super young age of just 31 years old, and there are many out there who believe his untimely death was caused by the Destiny Ring. This ring is one that he picked up from a California jeweler. Before purchasing it, there were warnings of the stories which claimed that this ring was cursed, but Rudolph decided to go ahead with the purchase anyway. It is said after this ring came into his possession, his luck began to turn. The movies he starred in started to do poorly, some even flopping, and his career began to struggle. From there, he fell incredibly ill, and when he passed away, he was wearing this cursed ring. From there, after his death, his lover ended up receiving the ring, but once it was in her possession, she too fell extremely ill, and she decided to give the ring away. All the owners after that were reported to have died in strange ways or under mysterious circumstances, which has led to the ring now being placed in a bank vault, all locked up so that it hopefully can never cause harm to anyone again. In our number 3 spot today we have The Orphan's Story. This is a book that was originally written in the early 1600s, but it didn't end up getting published until 2018. The Orphan's Story is about a 14 year old Spanish boy who heads to the Americas. You know, a classic kind of coming of age feel good story, right? Well. Not exactly, and that is exactly the reason why it took so long for it to be published. While the curse in this book doesn't come from the story itself, there is something dark lurking in those pages. The book's publisher, Belinda Palacios, who worked on the book for two years, explained that throughout those years, she was often warned of the cursed book and how every publisher who had tried to work on it before ended up passing away in a mysterious way before they could finish the book. When Belinda looked into this, it turned out to be true. Her research showed that those who tried to edit the book before either found themselves in horrible accidents or with strange illnesses. Luckily, Belinda made it through the process unscathed, so let's hope that maybe the curse has been lifted. Either way, it's probably one I'll personally stay away from. In our number two spot today, we have the van. Dr. Kevorkian was a man who's called an angel of death. If you haven't heard of these people before, they are doctors who like to euthanize patients, normally against their will. So this piece of work was doing just that, and one of his most important tools 
was his large white van. Yeah, huge red flag already. The van later went on to have the nickname Deathmobile, and it made headlines again when it found its way into a pawn shop. The reason the person who had previously had it didn't want it anymore is because they claimed that there were strange occurrences that began happening once it was in their possession. This story led to paranormal investigator and ghost hunter Zach Bagan purchasing it. Apparently people who enter the van immediately feel just overwhelming sadness, and they also feel like there are unseen eyes that are watching them at all times. In our number one spot today, we have the cursed chest. The story of this cursed chest starts off with a horrible person named Jeremiah Graham, who is said to have been making preparations for his firstborn son. Part of these preparations was having a hand carved chest made, and the person he got to make this chest was a man who he had enslaved named Remus. When Remus finished the chest, Jeremiah was not satisfied, so he began to harm Remus, who would unfortunately later pass away from his injuries. The other people who lived and worked in the home were rightfully horrified and angry about this situation, so they decided to sprinkle dried owl blood inside of the drawers, all while placing a curse on the chest. It is said that the curse brought tragedy to anyone who put their clothes inside of it, and apparently it is a curse that is working with a vengeance, as it is said that this chest and the curse are responsible for taking the lives of at least 16 people. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Anna Baker's wedding dress. In 1836, a man named Elias Baker purchased a mansion in Altoona, Pennsylvania and moved his small family in. Elias's oldest daughter was named Anna, and when she fell in love with a steel worker, things took a dark turn. Anna's father didn't want her dating this man, but she kept doing it in secret. The story goes that Anna and the man planned a secret wedding and were going to elope. Unfortunately, Elias found out and freaked out. He apparently purchased the steel mill that the man worked for and then forced him to have to move to an entirely different city so as to prevent him from being able to continue seeing Anna. Anna of course was furious with her father and I'm sure this was only made worse by his decision to offer other men to her, to which she of course declined because that's just weird. Anna instead locked herself in a room with her wedding dress that she never got to wear. Anna unfortunately never married after that and spent the rest of her life being terribly upset about the whole incident. After her death, it is said that her anger and despair ended up going into the wedding dress. Members of the Baker family reported seeing the dress in different places around the house, despite no one moving it themselves. Some have even reported seeing Anna's spirit dressed in the gown around the house as well. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Golden Eagle. This car was a 1964 Dodge 330 limited edition and it has been blamed for the death of around 14 people, which, like, how do we even let it get that out of control? It is said that the car started out as a police car originally, but there were three officers assigned to this car who all ended up taking their lives and other people's lives in horrible ways. Not in the car, but still super weird that this all seemed to happen after they had been using the cars for work. Because of this strange correlation, it ended up being sold off to another man. Throughout the 80s and 90s, it is said that because of the rumored cursed car, it became a point of interest for vandals. People began vandalizing the car only to meet their own untimely family fates, which were all met in strange ways. For example, it was said that one vandal died from being struck by lightning. It is said that the curse is so strong that one person decided to merely touch the car and it sent him into madness as he went on to commit atrocious crimes after that that I cannot even detail here on YouTube. The car now belongs to Wendy Allen who supposedly collects and decorates haunted cars for a living, so it seems as though it's finally found its home, far, far, far away from anyone else. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Blarney Stone. For hundreds of years, the Blarney Stone has resided within Blarney Castle, which is near Cork, Ireland. The stone is a piece of limestone, and legend says that those who give the stone a smooch will then be given the gift of the gab. This little smooch can bestow the power of being able to talk your way out of any situation, which would be incredibly useful, but there are those who always try to indulge in too much of a good thing. The issues start when you attempt to take a piece of the stone, no matter how small, away from a home. Those who don't follow the rules and take the stone end up being cursed with bad luck. Every year the castle receives parcels from greedy tourists who tried their luck at stealing portions of the stone. These parcels are returned with the intention of lifting the curse of misfortune. It is said that once the stone
bond is returned, the curse will be lifted, which is most definitely good news. So I guess the moral of this curse, however, is to not be greedy and to just follow the rules. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army was discovered in China, and it is a massive piece of funerary art that is thought to be one of the most massive archaeological finds of modern times. It truly is incredible, and it's something that's been attracting tourists from all over the world since its discovery. But for those who did the discovering, well, things haven't been going so well. In 1974, there were seven farmers who happened to stumble upon this huge discovery, and you would think that this would come with some kind of a reward, but instead, things have been going terribly for them. Soon after the discovery, the government claimed their farmland. After this, their homes were demolished in order to make way for the exhibition halls and gift shops that were to come. They didn't just get nothing for the discovery, they ended up losing because of it. This is exactly why many people believe that perhaps with the unearthing of this huge piece of art, they also dug up some sort of curse that was buried long ago. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Myrtle's Plantation Mirror. Myrtle's Plantation is located in St. Francisville, Louisiana, and it is said to be one of the most haunted places in the entire world, which seems like that would make a lot of sense. One of the reasons for this spooky reputation is because of a mirror that resides inside of it. It is said that this mirror holds the spirit of Sarah Woodruff and two of her children. Legend goes that a woman named Chloe was a slave at the plantation, and she drew up a sort of plan to get revenge on the owners of it, Sarah and her husband. Chloe baked a cake full of poison for them, but in the end, the rest of the family, except for the husband, ended up consuming the poisonous cake. When they passed away, it is said that their spirits went into the only mirror that was uncovered at the time, thus this haunted mirror was born. People who have since visited the plantation have claimed to see the family in the reflection, as well as handprints on the glass, despite the continuous polishing. In our number 5 spot today, we have tap shoes. These tap shoes were listed on eBay, and they are cute as can be. They're black shiny ones with a red bow to tie them together. They look recital ready, but apparently they haven't been used in a long time, and the reason behind it all is chilling. Legend goes that these shoes once belonged to a little girl who loved to dance. At some point, the shoes were retired, and she would go on to meet an untimely fate. The shoes ended up being placed with other old... The shoes ended up being placed with other old memento items and put in a closet and sort of forgotten about. The shoes, as well as the other items with it, ended up being part of an estate sale years later, but the spirit of the person who passed may have already had some other ideas about what they wanted to happen to the shoes. The seller of the shoes reported that there were mysterious happenings surrounding the shoes as they were clearing out their late aunt's house, the person who was the owner of the shoes. They explained that there were mysterious knocking sounds coming from inside of the closet, almost as if the shoes were tapping by themselves. Also, as it turns out, the house had quite a gruesome history that included killings, so if not the ant's ghost, perhaps there's another one lurking somewhere in there. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Dark Mirror. This mirror now resides with the traveling museum of the paranormal and the occult, but prior to that, this mirror was received from the owner who had purchased it from a psychic fair. It is believed that this mirror was created sometime around the 1820s or 30s and it is actually quite beautiful to look at, despite the sinister things it seems to hold. The owner who gave it to the museum explained that every time they peered into the mirror, they saw these extremely upsetting things while looking into the dark mirror's reflection. The museum has said that since they added the mirror to their collection, there have been guests who have also reported the same kind of things. Guests have claimed to see things reflected back at them like sightings of their own corpse. In our number 3 spot today, we have the water jug. Okay, estate sales are weird places. There are weird things there, some quirky items, but this has got to be one of the strangest on a whole bunch of different levels. It's a decorative drinking jug, but it's being held in a miniature cart that's being pulled by a porcelain donkey. I truly could not make that item up, nor could I make up the fact that this kitschy item is also apparently haunted. The seller of this item spoke about how he grew up with the item around, as it was always displayed at his grandmother's house, and that she always kept it full of water. This was all fine and dandy, until after she passed away, and he was taking care of the estate, and he bumped into it. How was this jug filled with water when no one was there to fill it? He thought that perhaps it was just old, leftover water, and he just ignored it, but the same thing seemed to happen 
repeatedly. And it wasn't even like the water level was staying the same. It would increase seemingly all on its own. The seller decided that this was not an item that they wanted to hold on to and decided it would be best to pass on to someone who is ready to take on this mysterious, strange object. In our number two spot today, we have Letta the doll. Before we really dive into this one, can we just acknowledge how all cursed dolls look like they would be a cursed doll? I mean like Annabelle, Robert, they both totally look like dolls that would be holding a secret scary curse. And this doll, Letta, is just another one that we can add to that list. Letta is a doll that is said to be around 200 years old and is extremely cursed. This doll is called Letta for short as its full name is Letta Me Out. Really clever. The doll was originally found underneath a house, which definitely feels like the origin story of a haunted doll. The creepy discovery came 47 years ago. Letta still lives with the man who found him. The hauntings of Letta include things like the doll walking around on its own at night, the owners finding objects around the house that have been moved into odd places, some people have even seen Letta move right in front of their own eyes, and the owner also reports finding little doll sized scuff marks around the home as well. It is said that this doll once belonged to someone who passed away while holding it, thus their spirit became trapped inside of the doll. Apparently one day in an interview about Letta, as the interviewer was asking questions about the person who passed, the doll began to move in her lap. Yeah, no thank you. Letta has his own Instagram and Facebook page in case you want to hear more about all of the creepiness surrounding this cursed doll. In our number one spot today, we have the mask. This metal mask resembles the face of a monkey. It's definitely already a little strange looking, but the story is even more interesting. According to the seller of this item, they explained that they acquired this mask in Thailand, but not before they experienced a supernatural battle where a witch used spells to bind the spirit of a jinn to the mask trapping it in. Since then, the mask is said to be full of supernatural powers, some of which could bring benefits, but it takes a whole pile of work. This mask is said to have the ability to fend off vampires as well as potentially bring riches to its owner, but it needs some things in return. The entity in the mask needs regular offerings of food and drink, and it also requires the owner to meditate in front of it for 20 minutes, three times a day. Talk about high maintenance. If a person refuses to do these things while in possession of the mask, it is said that a cruel fate awaits them. I mean, what do you expect when you anger an ancient spirit? Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the statue. This statue or bust is said to have been made by a man named William who enjoyed making these sorts of things out of clay. Unfortunately, however, legend goes that this specific statue was made on the same day that William was crushed to death during a tragic work accident. A co-worker of his who showed up to work the following day found that this statue was still there, so he took it home with him. For a while, he kept the statue hidden, but when he took it out to display it, things started to go awry. It started with just a heavy and uninviting feeling, but soon things escalated. He began to hear doors slamming on their own, only to go and find them wide open. If anything was placed next to the statue, the next time he would find it completely shattered, and at one point he found the statue in a position that he never placed it in. He finally had the last straw when he saw a dark, shadowy figure, or a sort of mist, moving around near where he placed the statue. After this, he was so spooked he had a friend list the item for him on eBay because he just simply needed to get rid of it. In our number 9 spot today, we have Aluru Rock. Aluru Rock is a large sandstone formation that is located in the southern part of the Northern Territory in Australia. It is sometimes known as Ayers Rock, but regardless of what it is called, this area is sacred for the people indigenous to the land. This is part of the reason that those who visit the rock are asked to not take anything from the site. Despite this, people of course still choose to smuggle pieces of the rock out of the area and home with them. Other than the bad karma and just in general feeling like a bad person for doing the one thing you're asked not to do, as it turns out, this rock may hold a more sinister secret. Those who have stolen rocks from the Uluru have experienced things like extremely bad luck, severe illness, and sometimes even the death of those they love. The curse these rocks hold is seemingly so bad that it is very common for the company that runs the tours of the formation to receive letters of apology that contain the stolen rocks. Apparently these letters come so often, at least one a day is expected. Maybe this is a weird coincidence, but it seems to be happening a little too often for that to be the explanation. In our number 8 spot today, we have the beds. Back in 1986, couple Deborah and Alan Tolman moved into a new home with their children in Wisconsin. The following year, they bought a second-hand set of bunk beds for their kids for 100 bucks. but as it would turn out, they bought much more 
than they had originally bargained for. When they brought the bunk beds into their home, they clearly must have brought something else along with it. It started when they began to see strange shapes in their home, and they would hear disembodied voices that, despite how hard they tried, they could not find the source of. They found themselves fighting with clocks and radios that turned on by themselves, they would find furniture that had moved seemingly all by itself, and sometimes they'd even see an apparition of an old woman. In the end, they not only threw the beds in the landfill, but they also moved from the home just to be safe. As far as we know, the beds remained in the landfill, but who's to say for sure? In our number 7 spot today, we have the Crying Children paintings. These paintings were a series created by an Italian painter who was known as Giovanni Breglin, but his name was really Bruno Amarillo. Bruno was born in Venice in 1911 and fought in World War II, which ended up being the inspiration for a lot of his paintings. During his time in the war, he saw a lot of suffering, and this is where he got the idea for the series of Crying Children paintings. After the paintings were sold, there began to be reports of fires in all of the places where the paintings were held. While this could have just been a strange coincidence, the weirdest part is that the paintings always remained intact while everything else around them was burned. This quickly became the most talked about thing and was on the front of every newspaper, and the paintings quickly gained the nickname Diablo. It caused the paintings to end up being replicated and mass produced, but none of the replicas hold quite the same powers as the originals. In our number 6 spot today, we have the Goddess Statue. The Goddess of Death statue is was also known as the Woman from the Lem. This artifact was made out of limestone, and it was created somewhere around 3500 BC and was found in Cyprus in 1878. Over the years, it has belonged to many different families who all have been ruined and dismantled by death. After the first six years of ownership, all seven members of the first family died. It then moved on to a second owner, and after four years, death began to come to him and his family as well. There was then a long period where it was unclaimed, but once the third family finally got a hold of it, several Several members of that family began to die as well. The third family ended up turning it over to the Royal Scottish Museum because it is, of course, an ancient relic, but legend goes that the museum curator who initially took care of it died within a year of receiving it. So maybe the curse lives on. In our number 5 spot today, we have the goblet. This is an item that was found in a museum, but it was a museum of specifically haunted things, so I feel like it still counts. This goblet is said to have been used for rituals of necromancy, which poses a few questions for me personally. What did they put in it and presumably drink out of it? Holy water? Wine? Blood? All the above? Who knows? Either way, here's the real kicker. This goblet was of course for sale on eBay, because why not? And the seller was claiming that it has an amazing energy to it. Okay. What kind of energy? Well, they said that some find it strangely positive, but that many perceive it as negative and malignant. All right. Don't think I'll be bidding on that auction, to be perfectly honest. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Surrey Ghost Car. On December 11th, 2002, a call came into the Surrey Police Department. The caller reported that they had just seen a car lose control and run off the road and then presumably crash. It was, of course, an emergency call, but not necessarily anything out of the ordinary. That was until authorities got to the location and realized that they couldn't find any evidence of a crash. They kept searching and ended up finding a maroon colored car that was nose down in a ditch nearby. By, but this car was covered in so much undergrowth that it must have been here for months. This meant that somehow this crash went undetected for five months, and worst of all, so did the body that lay nearby. Using dental records, they were able to identify the body as a man who had been wanted for robbery since July of that year. It is said that the sighting of the car leaving the road was a ghostly replay of the events that had taken place five months prior. In our number three spot today, we have doorknobs. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to ever hear about haunted doorknobs, but this might just be a thing that really does exist. These doorknobs were listed on eBay, and the seller explained that they were once the knobs seen on the doors at an asylum, which truly lands on the list of creepiest places in the world. Considering everything that is said to have gone on at places like these, it truly doesn't surprise me one bit. We're looking at you, lobotomies and other horrific mental health treatments of the past. These doorknobs must have quite literally opened the door to some terrifying things that I'm sure many of us would prefer to not even think about. According to the eBay list, Listing the asylum that they came from after it was abandoned is said to have had strange whispers, occurrences, and horrifying noises coming from it. This is all to say that maybe that trip to Home Depot is better than buying antique. Just this one time. In our number two spot today, we have the Nightmare Doll. Haunted dolls like Annabelle and even Robert get a lot of hype, but they certainly aren't the only dolls with stories of curses and hauntings behind them. This Nightmare Doll was listed for sale on eBay, and according to the seller, the doll is possessed by a Dibuk, which is a malicious 
this demon or entity. The seller of the doll is actually someone who apparently specializes in selling these sort of paranormal items that no one wants anymore. The seller explained that the owner of the doll bought it at an antique shop and while they did tell her about what the doll held, she didn't know what the word meant so she took it anyways. Soon after purchasing it, she realized that anyone who came into contact with the doll was then plagued with terrifying nightmares and occurrences of these sort of shadow people. She only could handle this all for a couple of months before she handed the doll over for it to be sold and moved far, far away from her. In our number one spot today, we have the carving. This is a carving that was sold on eBay in 2013, which the sellers claimed had been in their family for over 60 years. It was originally found by the seller's grandparents in the attic of their home. This was back in the 1950s and when it was found, the grandparents asked the original owners of the home where it had come from. They explained that it was a gift from a prisoner who was said to have carved it. The seller explained in their post that, quote, anyone who comes in contact with it seems to feel strange or creeped out by it. The statue mostly didn't cause too much harm, that was, until the seller tried to put it on display in their home. Once it was taken out of an old box and placed in a cabinet, strange occurrences began. They said that, quote, I began to experience the television turning off and on, lights coming on in rooms no one was in, the kids' toys coming on in the middle of the night in their room at 3 a.m. At the end of the day, despite the troubles this person had with the statue, they still ended up selling it for 85 bucks. Not a bad deal. Get rid of a demon and gain some cash for it. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army was discovered in China and it is a massive piece of funerary art that is thought to be one of the most massive archaeological finds of modern times. It truly is incredible and it's something that's been attracting tourists from all over the world since its discovery. But for those who did the discovering, well, things haven't really been going so well. In 1974, there were seven farmers who happened to stumble upon this huge discovery and you would think that this would come with some kind of a reward, but instead things have been going terribly for the farmers. Soon after the discovery, the government claimed their farmland. After this, their homes were demolished in order to make way for the exhibition halls and gift shops that were to come. They didn't just get nothing for this discovery, they ended up losing because of it. This is exactly why many people believe that perhaps with the unearthing of this huge piece, they also dug up some sort of curse that was buried long ago. In our number 9 spot today, we have the water jug. Okay, state sales, they're weird places, there are weird things, there's some quirky items, but this has got to be one of the strangest on a whole bunch of different levels. It's a decorative drinking jug, but it's being held in a miniature cart that's being pulled by a porcelain donkey. I cannot make this item up, nor could I make up the fact that this kitschy item is also apparently haunted. The seller of this item spoke about how he grew up with the item around as it was always displayed at his grandmother's house and she always kept it full of water. This was all fine and dandy until after she passed away when he was taking care of the estate and he bumped into it. How was the jug filled with water when no one was there to fill it? He thought that perhaps it was just old leftover water and he just ignored it, but the same thing seemed to happen repeatedly. And it wasn't even like the water level was staying the same, it would increase seemingly all on its own. The seller decided that this was not an item that they wanted to hold on to and decided it would be best to pass on to someone who is ready to take on this very mysterious and very strange object. In our number 8 spot today we have the Destiny Ring. Rudolph Valentino was an incredibly famous silent film star before he passed away at the incredibly young age of just 31 years old. And there are many out there who believe his untimely death was caused by the Destiny Ring. This ring is one that he picked up from a California jeweler, but before purchasing it there were warnings of the stories which claimed the ring was cursed, but Rudolph decided to just go ahead with the purchase anyway. It is said after this ring came into his possession, his luck really began to turn. The movies he starred in started to do poorly, some even flopping, and his career really began to struggle. From there he fell incredibly ill, and when he passed away he was wearing this cursed ring. From there, after his death, his lover ended up receiving receiving the ring, but once it was in her possession, she too fell extremely ill and she decided to give the ring away. All the owners after that were reported to have died in strange ways or under mysterious circumstances, which has led the ring to now being placed in a bank vault all locked up so that it hopefully can never cause harm to anyone ever again. In our number 7 spot today, we have the Bassano vase. The Bassano vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in Napa. On the wedding night, however, the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last breaths, she vowed to have her revenge, and at this point, it became 
unclear whether the vase was already cursed, or perhaps if this may be what caused the curse in the first place. As time went on, the vase was handed from person to person within her family, and with each new owner came another mysterious death. Because of this, the family decided to hide the vase away in some sort of a secret location, and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned, beware, this vase brings death. Well, of course, whoever found the vase did not listen, and instead, they sold it once again. The first buyer, who is said to have been a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then there was a 37-year-old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it three months with the vase in his possession, and at this point, you get where this is going. Right now, we don't know exactly where the vase ended up, but I'm just hoping it's somewhere deep underground, or in space, or something else far, far away from us all. In our number 6 spot today, we have the mask. This metal mask resembles the face of a monkey, it's definitely already a little strange looking, but the story behind it is even more interesting. According to the seller of this item, they explained that they acquired the mask in Thailand, but not before they experienced a supernatural battle where a witch used spells to bind the spirit of a jinn to the mask, trapping it. Since then, the mask is said to be full of supernatural powers, some of which could bring benefits, but it takes a whole pile of work. This mask is said to have the ability to fend off vampires as well as potentially bring riches to its owner, but it needs some things in return. The entity in the mask needs regular offerings of food and drink, and it also requires the owner to meditate in front of it for 20 minutes three times a day. Talk about high maintenance. If a person refuses to do these things while in possession of the mask, it is said that a cruel fate awaits them. I mean, what do you expect when you anger an ancient spirit? In our number five spot today, we have the cursed chest. The story of this cursed chest starts off with a horrible person named Jeremiah Graham, who is said to have been making preparations for his firstborn son. Part of these preparations was having a hand carved chest made, and the person he got to make this chest was a man who he had enslaved named Remus. When Remus finished the chest, Jeremiah was not satisfied, so he began to harm Remus, who would unfortunately later pass away from his injuries. The other people who lived and worked in the home were rightfully horrified and angry about this situation, so they decided to sprinkle dried owl blood inside of the drawers, all while placing a curse on the chest. It is said that the curse brought tragedy to anyone who put their clothes inside of it, and apparently it is a curse that is working with a vengeance, as it is said that this chest and the curse are responsible for taking the lives of at least 16 people. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Goblet. This is an item that was found in a museum, but it was a museum of specifically haunted things, so I feel like it still counts. This goblet is said to have been used for rituals of necromancy, which poses a few questions for me personally. What did they put in it and presumably drink out of it? Holy water? Wine? Blood? All of the above? Who knows? Either way, here's the real kicker. This goblet was of course for sale on eBay, because why not, and the seller was claiming that it has an amazing energy to it. Okay, what kind of energy? Well, they said that some find it strangely positive, but that many perceive it as negative and malignant. All right. Don't think I'll be bidding on that auction, to be honest. In our number 3 spot today, we have The Beds. Back in 1986, couple Deborah and Alan Tallman moved into a new home with their children in Wisconsin. The following year, they bought a second-hand set of bunk beds for their children for $100, but as it would turn out, they bought much more than they had originally bargained for. When they brought the bunk beds into their home, they clearly must have brought something else along with it. It started when they began to see strange shapes in their home, and they would hear disembodied voices that despite how hard they tried, they could not find the source of. They found themselves fighting with clocks and radios that turned on and off by themselves. They would find furniture that had moved seemingly all by itself, and sometimes they'd even see an apparition of an old woman. In the end, they not only threw the beds in a landfill, but they also moved from the home just to be safe. As far as we know, the beds remained in the landfill, but who's to say for sure? In our number 2 spot today, we have the Belcourt Castle chairs. Belcourt Castle is 
located in Newport, Rhode Island, and it is a former summer cottage. Construction on the cottage started in 1891, with it being completed in 1894, and inside there is a ballroom. This ballroom is important because it is said that it holds a group of haunted chairs. People who have visited the castle have reported a ton of strange happenings regarding this specific set of chairs. The reports include things like feeling chills racing up and down their spines, or feeling a strange sensation in a shift of energy while standing near the chairs, and some people have even explained how they have been pushed out of the chairs by an invisible force. I feel like just hearing stories might be enough to explain the energy shift some people are feeling, but actually being pushed out of a chair by some sort of invisible force would be absolutely terrifying. In our number one spot today, we have doorknobs. To be honest, I wasn't expecting to ever hear about haunted doorknobs, but this might just be a thing that really does exist. These doorknobs were listed on eBay, and the seller explained that they were once the knobs seen on the doors at an asylum, which truly lands on the list of creepiest places in the world. Considering everything that is said to have gone on at places like these, it truly doesn't surprise me one bit. We're looking at you, lobotomies and other horrific mental health treatments of the past. These doorknobs must have quite literally opened the door to some terrifying things that I'm sure many of us would prefer to not even think about. According to the eBay listing, the asylum that they came from after it was abandoned is said to have had strange whispers, occurrences, and horrifying noises coming from it. This is all to say that maybe that trip to Home Depot is better than buying antique just this one time. Coming up in our number 10 spot, we have Zach Bagans' The Haunted Museum. Zach Bagans' The Haunted Museum is called a haunted museum for a reason. Located in Las Vegas, there's some pretty Pretty scary stuff in there. It is known for having possessed objects and it is proud to do so. From a painting with the real ashes of Charles Manson painted into the eyes of a portrait of him, to Ted Bundy's glasses, this is a museum with some of the most low vibe items from some of the worst criminals and so obviously it would be haunted and the items would be possessed. I mean, they advertise it in the name so they own it. In our number 9 spot we have the Swansea Museum. Museum. The Swansea Museum is said to have one very possessed item, the Swansea Devil. This is an item that looks like the devil and people have confirmed that they definitely think it is haunted. It has a pretty interesting backstory actually. In 1890, an architect by the name of Sir Arthur Bloomfield beat out a local architect for the job of rebuilding the ancient St. Mary's Church and the local architect was not okay with it. Apparently a few years later, he ended ended up purchasing a row of cottages facing the church and so he tore them down and built a large red brick building there and he put a statue of a smiling devil on it. He then placed a curse on the church, proclaiming it to be destroyed and that the devil will look upon it and its rebel smiling. <laughs> Yikes. Jeez, I love that he wants to rebuild a church, a place for love and forgiveness, and then because he doesn't get his way, he fully does everything that he can to make the church church a negative place. Clearly a man who studies the Bible and its teachings. Not. <laughs> Perhaps he didn't get the job because the priests sensed how insane he clearly was. Anyways, the devil statue resides in this museum and it's clearly haunted. In our number 8 spot we have the Royal Scottish Museum. Ah, the Royal Scottish Museum. That was British, not Scottish, Melissa. <laughs> it honestly sounds like a classy place to go to. Probably because of the word royal, but whatever. Apparently this museum is slightly terrifying because it is the holder of one very possessed item. An item so haunted that if you touch it, you will die, as well as your family. Not joking. The woman from Leb statue is at this museum, and it has been known to belong to many, many families that have all passed away after owning it. Within only six years of owning it, all seven members of this one family passed away. This actually happened a few times until it was donated to the museum. The artifact is said to be from 3500 BC, but was found in Cyprus in 1878. So yeah, to say that the museum is showcasing a possessed object would be an understatement. 
In our number seven spot, we have the Louvre. The Louvre, located in France, is one of the most beautiful museums in the world. Honestly, it is one of my favorite places to visit in the world, even though it definitely has one or two or ten possessed paintings on display. From Dante and Virgil in Hell, to the Sabine woman, to the children of Edward, to Saint Peter of Verona, I have literally made another whole video on the haunted paintings at the Louvre because there's just so many. But of course, there would be. The Louvre houses some of the greatest artists in the history of the world. Of course there will be some art that is created when a human is having a bad day, but also there are evil people that paint, and that energy would certainly come through in their paintings. But honestly, the Louvre is magical even with the possessed paintings. Put a visit to it on your bucket list for sure. In our number 6 spot we have the Mutter Museum. The Mutter Museum, located in Philadelphia, is a museum that once started out as a sort of, you know, Ripley's Believe It or Not, and eventually turned into, well, something else. An American medical inventor by the name of Dr. Thomas Mutter donated a bunch of tools and got it off the ground. It's a museum where you can find some odd medical items such as an amputation kit from the Civil War and my personal favorite, a long human colon that apparently once had 40 pounds of, well, Poop. I'm a classy gal. The area that people believe is filled with some possessed items is called the bone room. Huh, I wonder why. It is a room filled with human skulls. 139 skulls, in fact. Lord knows why. They probably all come alive at night like the movie Night at the Museum. Creepy. The skulls all have descriptions as to how their owners passed away. Like an odd little memorial. Not spooky at all. In our number five spot, we have the Museum of Death. The Museum of Death, located in Los Angeles, California, USA, is one of Hollywood's horror museums in my opinion. It apparently has the largest selection of artwork from serial killers. So yeah, it definitely possesses one or two haunted items. Oh, and did I mention that the museum has a head as one of its items on display? Yeah, what the heck, right? It's the head of French serial killer Henri Landru. There are crime scene photos from the Manson murders and also many executions devices. Gosh, as terrifying as this all sounds, why do I still want to go? Curiosity always wins. In our number 4 spot we have Vent Haven Museum. The Vent Haven Museum is located in Kentucky and not gonna lie, it fully gives me the creeps. It was created by a man by the name of William Shakespeare Berger. <laughs> Great name. The museum is famous for its doll collection. Man, I'm not gonna lie, I loved dolls before Most Amazing. Now I find them terrifying. Hopefully I never have to do a haunted Barbie video while working here because that will probably destroy all of my happy childhood memories. <laughs> Anyways, apparently this museum has 800 dolls. Yeah, a lot of people say that they are haunted, but honestly, if you walked into a space with that many dolls, I'm sure you probably would think that too. In our number three spot, we have the Museum of Shadows. Apparently, this museum has gained a reputation for being one of the most haunted museums in the US. It is located in Nebraska, USA. Apparently it was once a brothel, so maybe that explains the initial low vibes, but in any case, it allegedly has over 1,000 possessed objects from all over the world. There are many reports of paranormal activity coming from the objects over the years, but also people have witnessed ghosts in this place and have heard laughter from time to time. Lovely. In our number two spot, we have the Lizzie Borden Bed and Breakfast Museum. This is probably one of the scariest museums that I have ever come across, and that is because it is literally a former crime scene. It was previously the home of Lizzie Borden and her family, and this is the place where two of her family members, if you haven't heard the story of Lizzie Borden, well, she was accused of killing her father and stepmother, and most believe this to be true, even though she was set free of all charges. They turned her house into an overnight museum and the place is filled with gruesome photos that are in the rooms where the bodies were found. Apparently there is a celebration breakfast ready for you if you survive the night. Kind of terrifying and awesome at the same time. Most likely this place has a few possessed items lying around. In our number one spot we have the Warren Occult Museum. The Warren Occult Museum in Connecticut is a museum that was opened by Ed and Lorraine Warren in the 80s and the items inside are items that they accumulated on their travels to help free spirits and clear.
nuclear homes. The number one most haunted and supposedly dangerous item in their possession that is possessed is the Annabelle doll, of course. They also have a doll called the Shadow Doll that goes into people's dreams and supposedly stops their heart while they sleep. There is a large man structure that was used for satanic rituals and a human skull used for black magic. I mean, the list goes on and on. <laughs> These guys aren't even hiding their possessed items, they're just owning them and showcasing them for the world to all get creeped out. <laughs>